Have you ever thought about how the number four becomes the number five? It may sound really, really simple, but the translation of number into its next number, its next successive number, actually opens a whole new door into what we call sacred mathematics. So this is a self, I'm calling this, how does four become the number five? And I've, I've written the number five with the golden ratio because you're gonna see that this very transformation from four becoming five involves the golden ratio. And to understand how this is done, we're gonna learn about a new word called the gnomon of two times two, how it creates root five, which is part of the golden ratio formula. So I'll explain all of that. So let's look at the number four. In essence, the number four is two by two squared. So this is how simple this is. So just by putting a cross here and a cross there, you can see I've partitioned a square into four parts and we could call it four square units. So I'm gonna highlight one square unit. Now this is important because I'm, it's like I'm taking this one unit, whatever this square area is, so we'll call this one by one, one by one, and that's one, and that's one. Imagine if I could pick up this, like a piece of paper and spread that square area all the way around this square. So, so this area here of one unit, if I add one to this four by four, I'm making the four become five. So I'm gonna shade in, what I'm shading in now is equal to one unit. This is really cosmic because if this is one and this is four, I've created four plus one is five. That's all I've done. And it, this is quite interesting because I'm going to show you what's embedded inside of this. So I'd like to, first of all, honor where I got this inspiration from. This is from a book, a classic book by Robert Lawler called Sacred Geometry. And he um, was he did a chapter on Osiris's throne. So here he's showing that Osiris is sitting on a four by four with a gnomon. See that L shape in there? He's he's saying that the four has become the five and that this is the throne for, for deity, for royalty. And from here, we're taking that throne that he's drawn, which I've just drawn, and we've just created the gnomon, the L shaped. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arc here to show you how we got this critical length. So this arc is critical. So I'll show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another color, say, um, white. So if I was to focus on this cross, the two by two cross, and I'm starting from the corner here, I, I, could, I could draw an arc from here to there. So this is called a quarter circle arc. So you can see that that's just a quarter of a circle. There's something interesting about a, what we call the quartering. So... That's how we know where the gnomon went to. So this arc is was to determine this critical distance here. So let's look at this distance. We need to know what this distance is, and it's called 0.236. Now that might not mean anything to you at this moment, but this is the critical harmonic, 0.236. So that's that distance here. So that means the whole distance of this new square that has a square area of five is is two plus point two three six. So, so two plus point two three six is called is two point two three six. So that's that area here. Now, two point two three six is a very interesting number because when I square that number and and multiply that by itself. 2.236 squared equals root equals five. E that's what equals five. But this, so that means this distance here is called root five. Root five is 2.236. So root five times root five here, any, any square root number multiplied by itself gives that whole number. So that tells us that if the side is root five, 
the area here is five. I hope you understood that. So um, this is just all done with a, a compass. So without this, without this compass work, the set, the set square gives us lines and the compass gives us um, the 2.236. So that's the ancient Masonic symbol. There's the compass, that's a, a right angle. And, and there's, so this is the set, that, that's the set square and this is the compass. So this was a very ancient Masonic symbol because just by having our arc in and the set square, we can create the universe. Okay, so the, the fact that we got root five is very important because root five is part of a formula for the universe called the for phi ratio. So the symbol is a circle with a line through it. So the phi formula, which we know is 1.618, and we need to know this in a minute, to understand why 0.236 is important, is that the formula for phi, for phi, involves this distance here, root phi. So the formula is one plus root phi divided by two. So one plus 2.236 is 3.236 divided by two gives 1.618. We put dot, 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 that means it goes infinite. And the other way, can you see how I've divided the square into four little squares? So if you were to look at this double square here, the golden ratio is the diagonal of two unit squares put together. So that's one and that's one and that's one. So this diagonal, if this is one and this longer side is two, the diagonal of that rectangle is called root five. So you should be able to see that root five was already already known inside this two by two subsquare. Yeah, and the other reason just why we need to know about this fourness, so the four becoming five, by having four unit squares, this grid of four is also critical that when we take the number four, this base of our pyramid, you could say, when we divide it by the square root of five, which happens to be 1.272, we end up with the true value of pi, called 3.144. So this is the true value of pi when we understand that all the harmonics of the circle are based on root five. So root five is the key to everything. And just, um, just I want to read to you what a gnome, I'll read to you what the definition of a gnomon is, but just quickly, if you took one on phi, the reciprocal of phi here, and made it into a cube. So one on phi is called 0.618. So 0 0.618 times 0 0.618 times, so the X, Y, and these are the Z axis. So if we made a cube and we cubed it, we know that um, 0 0.618 times 0 0.618 times 0 0.618 is called phi to the minus three. So this distance here, phi to the minus three equals 0.236. And if we looked at phi cubed when we cube, when we cube 1.618, we get 4.236. So this, this, did you notice that when we, when we cube phi, we get 4.236. And that distance here, the 236 is the phi to the minus 3, which is 1 on phi. So 1 on phi, that's 0.618 times 1 on phi. That's another 0.618. We're getting smaller and smaller gives us the 0.236 so you can see that this critical aspect here how the four becomes a five is all based on the harmonics of the golden ratio and i'd just like to conclude with a quote um just like to conclude with a quote yeah um so to understand why this was all based on what we call the gnomon this l-shaped he here and I'll explain what that means. The gnomon is the increment between two successive numbers, including square and triangular numbers. The ancient Greek mathematician and engineer, Hero of Alexandria, defined a gnomon as that which, when added to an entity or number or shape, makes a new entity similar to the starting entity. Thus, in a sense, a gnomon is a little part that makes wholeness. It makes fractality, it makes self-similarity.